welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I am a watercolor artist and a furniture painter, so you will be seeing both types of tutorials on this channel. But today I'm gonna do some watercolor for you. I went to a forest preserve several days ago, and I saw a flower that really caught my eye. I came home and did a little research and found out it is a wild hollyhock. I've seen hollyhocks before, but nothing like this one. So I took a couple photographs, and I decided to paint it. So I'm gonna share that with you today. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so I have my Arches watercolor paper, I have my Winsor Newton watercolors, and I have two paintbrushes, Grumbacher, and size 7 and 10 if you wanted to follow along with me. And of course, my paper towel and two cups of water. Okay, so the other day I went to a forest preserve with my daughter, and I was taking pictures, of course, of flowers like I always do. And I came across this one flower that I had never seen before. Um, so I came home and I looked it up. I took a picture of it and I looked it up. And I guess it's a wild hollyhock. And I've seen hollyhocks before, but I had never seen one like this. Um, so I decided to paint a little picture of the hollyhocks. Of course, I also have um, like some little circles and stuff in there. So this is a little bit more of a decorative painting. But I am going to show you how to paint the hollyhock that I had seen that day. It was just so stunning. Um, it was this like soft pink with some darker pinks and this like little star looking green like leaf in the middle. It was just really, really pretty. I, I loved it. It just caught my attention and I wanted to paint it. So actually at the Forest Preserve that day, I did sit down and I painted this because um, I was so inspired. I couldn't even wait to go home and paint it. So I did this at the Forest Preserve, but I am going to show you um, today how to paint what I had seen. So I'm only going to be using a few uh, paints here. I think I've got, um, I know I said they're Winsor Newton. They are all Winsor Newton, except for a few. I did buy a couple Daniel Smiths just to try them out because I had never tried out the Daniel Smith uh, paint before. So I did go ahead and I purchased um, the Daniel Smith Opera Pink, which I'm falling in love with, and also the Viridian Green. I love that one as well. Um, so those are the two Daniel Smiths I have, but the rest are, um, the, rest are the Winsor Newton. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out with the center of the flower first. So I'm gonna pick up a little sap green, get that wet here, and it's got this, it's got the five points. So it's like a little star, but it's got the five points. Um, and then the circle in the middle, and then the petals branch out from there. So um, I'm gonna start with the five points first. So they're kind of, and I'm using this on wet paper, right? I'm sorry, dry paper right now. So it's my wet paint on dry paper right now. So this is just sap green and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna kind of place out where I want those. You can leave a little highlight in the middle. I'm gonna place out where I want them. And I think I want most of the dark green at the tip, so I am gonna bring more of the dark green at the tips of them and let it bleed out a little bit. And you will see, sometimes I go from my paint directly to my paper. Sometimes I don't even stop at the palette and mix it because I just want the color to be a little bit more vibrant. I feel that if you do stop at your palette a little bit and start mixing and blending colors, um, it kind of, uh, it kind of dilutes the color a little bit. So I'm not probably going to be using my, my palette too much today. But, um, but go ahead and, and use it. If you, if you feel more comfortable, everybody paints differently. If you feel more comfortable using your palette, definitely do it. Uh, do whatever's comfortable for you. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to deepen up these tips of these little petals here. I don't even know if you call them leaves or petals or what. They're right in the center of the flower, but they look like little leaves. I don't know. They're really, they just caught my attention. And if you wanna bring in a little, I'm gonna bring in a little uh, cad yellow, just to give it a little bit of uh, dimension here. 
And I'm just kind of pouncing that on. I'm gonna let it do its thing and just blend on its own. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and I'm gonna go on to the actual petals. So I'm gonna pick up my Opera Pink and um, this time I am gonna be blending it because I do want to get both colors on my palette. So I'm gonna be doing the Opera Pink and the Perm Rose. I want a little bit of those colors and I don't want it to be too vibrant. That's why I'm actually mixing it on my palette. They're a little bit, it's more of a see-through petal. So, and the petals didn't come off the, the, um, the green here. It kind of was in between the two greens. So make sure when you are painting this that your pink petal is in between the two greens, not coming right off it. And I'm gonna start with the edge of it first and make it really, really um, like flowy, very wavy, ripply, because it wasn't a straight flower. It wasn't just like a straight petal. And you can start bleeding that down a little bit. So I am gonna be doing more of the wet on wet technique on the petals, whereas the inside, I wanted it a little bit more precise, so it was dry paper. This is gonna be a little bit more wet. I want it to be a little bit more flowy. And if you think that you're, it's too pink, just lift it up with your brush and dab it off on your paper towel. Get some clean water on your brush, dab it. Start brushing your paint maybe more towards the end because the ends of the flowers were a little bit more vibrant than the middle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and deepen in with my mixture, just the edge here, and I'm gonna let it do its thing and blend. Um, if you wanna throw in a little purple, you can throw in a little purple. We're actually gonna be putting in, I don't know, on some of these you can see, I did them all different, but like this one here, you can see I did a little bit of the purple at the end as a different layer. Um, just to bring in a little bit of dimension, but we're gonna be doing that later. But if you feel like bringing in purple now, definitely go for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep making my petals. So again, it's just the opera pink and the perm rose. And you can kind of judge how big you want your petals. And if you do like a whole bunch of different flowers on here, you can make them all different sizes because that day I saw all different sizes. And even the buds were so interesting. I might even do a couple buds today too. So I'm just gonna get some water and I'm gonna start blending it back to the edge of the flower because I want the edge of the flower to be a little bit more vibrant. And if you wanna leave some white space in here, you definitely can. I'm gonna show you both flowers today. Um, this one here, I'm not gonna be leaving white space, but some of these I did leave white space. So it's a little bit more textured of a flower. You see a little bit more of the veining. So I'll show you both, both kinds today. So I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna go on to the next. Now another thing is, when you outline something with your paint like this, don't let it dry like that because you will always have that little outline there. As much as you keep blending and blending, you will always have a little outline. So try to keep your flower moist so then that way you can get rid of that outline right away. You don't really want that outline. Sometimes you do. I mean, depending on what you're, what you're painting, sometimes you do want an outline or a shadow or a, you know, a nice deep um, shadow on it. But right now, for these flowers, we don't want that. So keep your petal nice and moist so it all blends evenly. You don't want your edges to dry with a nice, harsh line, at this point, at least. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna deepen up my greens a little bit. So I'm gonna bring in a little bit of that Viridian green. 
And I'm going to start just giving just some depth to these these um, the center here of the flower. So right now I've got three colors in my center. It's sap green, viridian, and I put brought in a little bit of that cad yellow. And it doesn't really matter where you bring in your greens. Um, just kind of leave your center blank right now because that's kind of more of like a brownish, at least on the flowers I was looking at, it was more of like a brownish color. So just leave your center alone at the moment. And there's no right and no wrong of how to do these. You can leave a highlight. You don't have to leave a highlight. You can leave some on some petals and not on the others. It doesn't matter. It's mother nature and nothing, you know, nothing matches up. It's not all the same. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on my next flower and show you a little bit more of the, um, the, the more textured petals. So I'm gonna start out with my green again and make that center again. I'll leave a little highlight here. Oh, and another thing is sometimes I draw out my flowers first with a pencil, a very light hand just so you can erase your marks if they start, you know, if they show up at the end of your painting, you can go ahead and erase them if you want to. Um, this flower here, I'm not drawing it out first. So if you feel like drawing this out first, go for it. You know, it's whatever makes you feel more comfortable. And I'd be interested to hear in the comments if um, if you've seen this flower before. I'm sure you have, especially if it's a wildflower. It might be growing anywhere. I had just never seen it. Like I said, I've seen hollyhocks before, which I think are gorgeous. But this one was like, I don't know, it was just different. It wasn't, that's why I had to come home and look it up. I'm like, I didn't know what it was. But I guess it's a wild hollyhock. And there was a specific name, which I can't even pronounce, so I'm not even going to embarrass myself and try and pronounce it. It, it was spelled... Uh, differently. Um, I wouldn't even know how to start pronouncing it, but um, but in the definition it said a wild hollyhock. So here I'm just going in and I'm blending in some of my greens. This one I brought in the Viridian Green right away. You could wait to the end to do that like we did on this first one. You could bring it in now. There's no right, there's no wrong. And I know some painters don't like to um, maneuver their, their page around like I am, like I keep turning it. Um, there's really no rule that says in watercolor that you can't turn your page. It's just easier for me to keep turning my page because making my pedal with, I'm a righty, and making my pedal going up is easier. Um, going sideways is always a little bit harder. Going up and going down is fine. It's the ones that are going sideways that are a little bit more difficult for me. So I just turn my page. If you feel that you have to turn your page also, don't feel like that's wrong. Um, I know that some watercolor artists say try to keep your page straight. I don't. It's, it's for whatever makes you feel more comfortable. And I'm adding a little bit of that cad yellow in there again. And I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna thin up some of my highlights a little bit. I thought some of them were a little too thick. All right. And I'm gonna start bringing in my petals again, but this time I'm gonna leave more white space. Here, like I said, I did the gradation from the light pink to the dark pink. This one here, I'm gonna do um, the same colors, the opera pink and the perm rose mixture, but I'm gonna leave some white. So it'll be like two different types of the hollyhocks. Two different looks, I should say. So I'm still kind of making that outline like I was talking about before, but this time I'm gonna come in and instead of putting a wash of the pink down, I'm gonna start bringing in Start bringing in some of those lines so it looks like it's got texture. There. 
So you can see already, this one's got way more texture than that one. Even though we're gonna go in and put some texture on it, it's not gonna be as contrasty as this one is. So I'm gonna turn my page and I am going to make the next petal with the same process. I'm trying not to get my hand in the way so you can see everything. So it's kind of like a shaky hand. You don't need it to be really precise, like straight lines. Some of them could be jagged, some of them could be broken up. It's actually more interesting if it's not just straight lines going. Um, and then just bring it down to the middle of the flower. And we can also, before it dries, we can go ahead and deepen up our edge here. And it looks like my petal wants to dry pretty fast. So I'm just gonna help it along a little bit with just some water. And I'm gonna help it along going down the flower. If you see that your petals are drying a little bit, just depends on like what kind of climate you're painting in. If you're painting outside in the sun, obviously your painting's gonna be drying a little bit faster. I'm under these bright lights, so maybe it's affecting a little bit how this is drying a little bit faster. I, I don't know. But go ahead and um, just add a little water if your petal's starting to dry faster. This one here, I'm going to deepen up. This, this petal is still wet, I can see it. It's nice and shiny. So it's blending, it's blending nicely. Okay. And actually, I think I wanna bring this petal out a little bit. So at this point, if you wanna bring your petals out a little bit, go for it. I think that this petal just wasn't long enough. If your flower's looking a little too squatty, you can always maneuver your, um, you can always adjust your painting. I'll bring in a little bit more of that hot pink. I know I've said this before in my videos, but I have three dogs. And so if you hear barking or choking, one of them's got a chronic cough, um, or walking around with their little nails on the wood floor, I apologize. Because they're always around me. They're like my little shadows. They're always around me. I try to keep them in the other room when I'm doing these videos, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. They want to be with me. Like one of them is staring at me right now. <laughs> Okay, so I did that one. Now I'm gonna add in a little bit more of that pink on the edge here. And if you think that it's too much white, go ahead and just add a couple more little broken up lines. It's, you know, or if you like that white, if you want to leave all that white space, go for it. Maybe it's a little bit more of a white flower with just some pink highlights on it. And overlapping your flowers is always a good thing. I like when flowers overlap, it just makes it look more interesting, more realistic, um, rather than having all your flowers you know, separated on your page, if you're doing multiple flowers. And you could even do multiple, which I'm not gonna get into on this video, but I will get into it on another video, um, different perspectives of the flowers as well. Like let's say you're looking at the back of the flower or the side of the flower. This one here, I'm just wanting to show you how to generically do this flower. Um, but I will do another video on perspective also. I do, I do, um, I think I have that in a couple of my other videos is the perspective of certain flowers, if I remember right. If you go back in some of my older videos, I think you will see some perspective of different flowers. This one here, I'm not gonna do that for you today. This one is just to show you the two different, you know, the gradation or the more textured. And I just simply just wanted to do this flower because I was just so in love with it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more pink on the edge here while it's still wet. And I'm finding that I'm using my Opera Pink by Daniel Smith more than my Perm Rose by Winsor Newton. Um, so if you're following along with me and you wanna do, you know, you could do these, these flowers any color you want. Like I said, purple, whatever, yellow, orange. Um, but if you're following along with me, those are the colors I'm using. But I'm using a little bit more of the Opera Pink than I am the Perm Rose. So 
So you could see already the difference between these two flowers. And I don't know which one I like better. I, I just, I love them both. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna show you, these have dried. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the layering once again on these flowers. And if you want to move to a smaller brush, maybe I should, maybe I'm gonna show you that. All right, so I'm jumping from my size seven. Sorry, I'm switching, switching it up here a little bit, but I wanna show you, um, I will use my, let's go to the five. I'm gonna go to a five and see how that goes. So my petal is dry, once again, I'm not doing the wet on wet technique because I want these lines to show up. If you were doing wet on wet, these lines wouldn't be precise. And I want these lines to definitely show up. That was part of the beauty of these flowers. So see how that's staying now? If this petal was wet, those lines wouldn't be showing up. They'd be spreading all over the place. So my video decided to stop in the middle of the video without me knowing. So I went ahead and I finished the painting um, thinking that I was videotaping myself and I did not. So this was the finished product, um, but I am going to be redoing it for you. So I left off. I started again and left off where this video had cut me off. So I am going to be recreating this one for you. All right. So where I think we left off was um, the first layer. I did move over to my number five, um, just to get some more of that line, um, more detailed lines. So I'm still using my Perm Rose and my Opera Pink. And I'm gonna go over the, let's see, this one is dry. So I'm gonna go over the one um, that I had did with more of the white showing through. So I'm bringing in some of that pink on the edge of my petal again, and with a smaller brush, like I said, I moved to a number five, I'm just gonna be bringing down some of that pink again. So it's gonna look like it's a darker pink, but it's not, it's just a second layer going on. And I'm still leaving some of my white space. I'm just deepening up some of my pinks, but some of the light pinks I still want showing through. So I'm starting at my edge. And I'm gonna be bringing it down. And again, with a shaky hand, you want them to be broken up lines, kind of a shaky hand. This flower is still damp. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the purple on this flower. So just to give it a little bit more dimension, I'm adding a little bit of my violet. It's Windsor Newton Violet. And I'm just gonna go over what I just did and bring in a little bit more of this color. Again, you want it more saturated at the edge of the petal and then just with a light hand, I'm just using the tip of my brush, I'm bringing down some lines. And I'm not even really going all the way to the edge. I want the purple to stay more at the, um, the edge of the petal rather than the interior, the middle of the petal. So I'm gonna do that to all the petals.
and you can always let this dry and go in with another um, layer of purple. Actually, I see, I would like a little bit deeper over here. I want some of these a little bit deeper. So you can keep layering if you want to. So that is one. Let's see if these are dry yet. Yeah, these are pretty dry. So I'm gonna go in with my pink again and do my second layer on these petals. I had started my second layer already, but um, where the video had cut me off. So I'm just doing them again. Still the same pink mixture. And I'm just bringing it down slightly. So again, the edge of my petals are a little bit um, more vibrant, a little bit, it's got a little bit more saturation of the paint. And then I'm just bringing the broken up lines more towards the interior of the petal. Now, some of my green had blended into my petal here. That doesn't bother me at all. I actually think it looks kind of pretty. But if it bothers you, like on this painting, I had actually let it dry completely, so I don't have any of that bleed through. Um, but on this painting, I do have the bleed through because I had done it again for you and I didn't let things dry because I was just trying to hurry up and, and get back to where I was on this painting. Um, so it did bleed through. So here's the two different looks. No bleed through and bleed through. Um, I think they're both pretty. So it's just a matter of what you like. So let's go ahead and add more pink on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of purple to this one now. And you don't have to add the purple. You, you could do whatever color you want. So I had the sap green and the cad on the page, and now I'm adding a little bit of Daniel Smith Viridian, just to give it a little bit of a darker green. And you wanna leave your centers still white because we're gonna be doing um, a different look in the center here. So I'm just pulling in a little bit. And you could have done your Viridian green at the beginning too, if you wanted it to all blend nicely. sap all right and let that dry and then if you want to get rid of some of these highlights um, I like the highlights but if they're too thick for you then just go ahead and um, just thin them up a little bit just add another just add a little bit more paint there and thin them up a little bit or make them a light green or whatever all right, let's do the same to this one. Okay, 
So while I let those dry, I'm gonna go ahead and make some stems. I'm just gonna take my sap green and I'm gonna pull in a stem maybe from here, going this way. And maybe a little bud coming off it. And I'm still leaving a little bit of a highlight here too. I'll bring in a little bit of my Viridian Green. And so one thing about composition is you want your eye to play around the paper. Um, so I'm gonna do another bud coming up this way. And it doesn't have to, your painting doesn't have to be literal. You don't actually have to have this stem connect to this stem and then the bud. You can actually have your stem bleed right off the page and then put a bud because your imagination in your mind is gonna start telling you that this stem and this stem connect down here. So it's actually a little bit more interesting to the eye if you play off and bleed things off the edge um, because then your imagination just automatically puts it together that this and this are connected down here somewhere. I'm gonna add a little bit of my cad yellow. And another thing is I try to keep to the same colors. So like I added a little bit of cad yellow to my center, so I'm gonna do it here also, just so that the whole painting kind of flows together. And let's see, I'm gonna have this stem come down this way. And I'll have a bud right here. And here again, I'm going to just kind of put like a stem is coming off here so you know that they connect down here somewhere. Or maybe there's another flower down here. Your eye just automatically connects it. So you don't have to be literal with your paintings and just connect every stem to every flower. Just let the eye, you know, your mind will put it together and know, you know, it'll make sense to you. So I'm adding a little bit more of that Viridian Green. I'll add a little Viridian Green in here. And I'm just kind of pouncing it on a little bit. I'm not really brushing it, I'm just pouncing it. You could brush it if you want to. Uh, let's see, why don't we add another Why don't we add another stem coming up this way, a little bud maybe over here. So always think about the composition of your painting as well. Um, I might continue this painting once the video has stopped and finished this painting because I might add a few more petals over here or over here and it's always nice to overlap your flowers as well. Um, it just, it, it's just, it makes more of an interesting painting. So I might finish this painting. Um, I'm just doing a few flowers here for you, just for the sake of the video. Uh, let's go ahead and put maybe another bud over here. That's about it. I don't want too many buds. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start finishing my centers because they're probably dry by now. And I'm gonna use a little of my burnt umber. And this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm going to take my brush and I'm just gonna pounce little dots in a circle. And then I'm gonna drag those little dots more towards the middle of the painting. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna do it again on this one. So I'm going to make little dots in a circle and then I'm going to bring it in little lines. And since I used a little bit of burnt umber there just to make my painting make a little bit more sense, I'm going to be bringing in a little bit of burnt umber even on my, um, my leaves. Just a little bit. Give it a little shadow here and there. 
because it's nice when you use similar or the same colors a little bit all over your painting. Um, it just kind of makes your painting, it puts it together a little bit more. It finishes it off a little bit more. I'm gonna use a little bit of that burnt umber also on my buds. Bring in a little bit, even on my stem. And a little on this one. And my buds have dried at this point, so I'm just kind of blending it in a little bit. You could have totally done this when your buds were wet. There's no right and no wrong. All right, I'm gonna bring a little bit of that over here. Now this one was still wet, so it's bleeding in nicely. And that one is too. All right. All right. I'm gonna add a little bit of cad yellow to the centers now, just to tone down that brown a little bit. There. If you want to add a little bit more cad yellow on your buds, you can. Maybe I'll add a little more yellow on this one. Maybe a little more yellow on this one. Give it a little highlight. Maybe a little more on this one. So at this point, just kind of play around. Just kind of look at your painting and see where you need a little more highlight, a little more depth. There. All right, so let's see these together. Okay, so I wanted to show you the same flower, but using two different, I mean, it's the same technique, but this one I left a little bit more white space, so it gives you a little bit more of that pop in your face, um, kind of uh, textured look. And this one is a little bit softer look because I didn't leave as much uh, white space in the petals. So this one, you can see the white, the light pink, the medium pink, and the purple. And this one, you just see the light pink, medium pink, and purple. Um, but if you wanted to go ahead, and actually, you know what? I feel like this one needs a little bit more pop. You can always go ahead and still play around. And you can add in a little bit more of the pink or the purple. If you think that it needs a little bit more pop at the edge of the, uh, the petals, you can definitely add in another layer and you can keep playing around with this all day. Um, but for the sake of the video, I am gonna end it right there. And there is my hollyhock. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Hope you have a great day, bye.